This is my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and for the next week, it's going to go in a place where I'm never going to see it again. And we'll be swapping to this, what I'm holding in my hand now, my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So what's the, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, so it's actually been two weeks, and holy crap, what a two weeks. So essentially, uh, my son got sick, which led to me getting sick, which you've probably heard in the last couple of videos, which has led to a cascading chain of events, meaning the last two weeks have felt like two whole darn months. But in the positive column of that sentiment for you means I've had a ton of time to lounge around and use the S24 Ultra. Today I wanna to talk about experiences and how the swap to an Android ecosystem as a whole went because it can't just be the phone by itself anymore, right? Like, how did that all go? And where was the friction and frustrations I had over the past couple of weeks? I mean, that was the first hurdle I had to overcome. Switching to the Ultra sounds so easy. I mean, look at this thing, it's great. But I normally carry a lot of tech with me and most of that is Apple. So not only did I have to swap out my phone, but I had to swap out my Apple Watch for a Galaxy Watch, and I swapped out my MacBook for the Tab S9. But as I already had all these things, setup was no big deal. It was actually kind of trivial, really. And if you'd like a more in-depth video on a similar ecosystem as a whole, I'll leave a link below for something like that. The first software hurdle to overcome was text messaging, which is where the dreaded green bubble, blue bubble conversation gets heated up or I guess pondered over because it doesn't make any sense to folks that don't live in the US. Texting with my family did cause some additional friction. I had to start group chats over again because the previous versions were all via iMessage. And it, okay, fairness for fairness sake, it was kind of a pain at first, but once you get into it, it's not that big of a deal. You just get used to those group messages. For gaming, that's really the only other place where I text a lot of people and I just use Discord. So I guarantee the people that I've been playing WoW Classic Season of Discovery Phase 2, which just came out by the way, and it's high been no lifing that. But my guildmates have no idea whether I swap from an iPhone to a Samsung. So all communication has not been that bad. And physically texting has been great though. I really like the keyboard here and the way that it's spaced out across the width of this gigantic display. I was kind of worried that because the phone is so big that there might be problems like on a big tablet. You try typing on an iPad or something. Sometimes it's hard to get your thumbs where they need to go. But this might be the best cell phone typing experience I've had since physical keyboards still existed on phones. And I guess that segues pretty nicely into talking about just actually holding the phone compared to my iPhone in general. And I really think I prefer the Ultra's design. Now both are good and both feel great to use, but something about the more rectangular shape here just feels better. I said this in the two weeks later video a couple of weeks ago, but there is some kind of a trick going on here where the phone feels smaller than it actually is. Like in a good way, like the phone feels small, but the screen feels gigantic. It's just. It's a trick of the mind that I don't know how they did this. But the Ultra feels slim and sleek, and it hasn't caused me any fatigue to hold, even when I'm out running, which I was able to take this out running for the first time today. I will say though, aesthetically, the four camera, one sensor configuration on the back looks kind of goofy. I know looks don't matter that much, but if I'm gonna quibble about something today, I much prefer the look of the triple camera array on the iPhone to the tall tower of power that are Samsung's cameras. If we look away from the cameras and we just overall looks, uh, this is the single best looking phone that I've ever used. Moving from physically using it to the software underneath, I didn't see that big of a difference between the two, and I know that is blasphemy in some sections of the internet. Both operating systems are pretty comparable in the stock configuration. Yes, I know you can do all sorts of customization to Android phones, but I'm a pretty basic person, and I generally just use either the stock phone or included templates, like I'm not gonna go through any like scripts or anything crazy here. I liked being able to set up basically the exact same home screen and secondary screens as I have on my iPhone. Everything is simple to find and even setting the Ultra up from the iPhone was generally pretty easy plugging them both into USB-C. The process of transferring over my text, photos, apps, information from the iPhone to the Ultra was pretty darn easy. I did run into a little bit of a headache when the transfer was over though. The problem is the Ultra did its best to emulate how I had my iPhone set up with that process. And maybe it's just me and the time that I tried to do it, but it kind of made a mess of my phone. Apps were bundled together pretty weird. Some weren't there, some were mislabeled. It was great that it had everything, 
but I did have to take some time after the fact to clean it all up. So probably still a net time gain to do the transfer instead of starting from scratch, but absolutely something to be aware of before you make the switch. That's why we did the actual swap. So I could talk you through like the friction points that I found. I really like the settings options here and Samsung's ability to find what I needed was fast and efficient. I haven't really used a big old Android phone since my Note 2 many years ago. And one of the things that I think gets overblown from both Apple and Android users is the assumption that the other side is overcomplicated or hard to figure out. I thought navigating to find specific apps or settings or features was super easy. And again, the gigantic glass screen and ease of typing made it very simple to get up and running. Like I was able to be up and doing all the things I needed to do within hours. Moving over into the cameras, I really like the cameras on the S24 Ultra. I've heard from y'all in the comments that these are very similar to, if not identical to the cameras in the 23 Ultra. So it's not new to you, but it is definitely new to me. And I think these have been awesome. Photo wise, like I said, I've been kind of stuck in the house the last couple of weeks. So I haven't been able to get out and about to take too many photos, but the video has gotten a lot of use for me because I've been using it here in the YouTube videos. As we opened up this whole video, I did it on this because these cameras are really, really great. And what makes it even better is the default camera app here is way better than the default camera app in iOS. You can set it into pro mode and have more detail control here without needing to download an extra app. And that is great because sometimes you have to pay for some of those pro camera apps here it's just all included. My favorite part has been the focus peaking. That's where you can just see what's in focus and what's out of focus. I'm kind of a camera snob and I try to do manual focus for everything except these YouTube talking head parts. And the S24 Ultra with the Pro Tools and this gigantic screen made nailing focus so easy. I know it's not as hard to pull focus as like on a 1.4 prime lens, but when my tech can be made easier to use all around, hmm. I, it just makes me happy. And I have to say the thing I've liked most over the past couple of weeks over iOS, just over anything, is the modularity of this phone. And I know I've said that a lot in previous videos, but I can't get over it. I've used this a ton with that little kickstand and keyboard that I showed in my accessories video. This has been my power work combo. It's how I've written all of my YouTube scripts. It's helped me do all of my research. It's just great. Seriously, combine that with the mouse implementation on this mobile operating system, it's been top notch and it has pretty much let me turn my Ultra into a straight up tablet. I do wish you could get that DeX multi-window support straight on the phone, like on the Tab S9. Maybe there is a way to do that and I haven't found it yet, but that would be, I think this display is big enough that you could get away with that. That would make this so Good, and DeX though, just DeX as a whole. Plugging this phone into my portable monitor is breaking my brain in a good way. I cannot believe that in such a small kit, I can have most of what I need a laptop for. And the Ultra is powerful enough for me not to miss carrying around a laptop or carrying around a tablet. Okay, the only thing that suffers in this laptop type mode are the speakers aren't as good as carrying around a regular laptop, be that Windows or Mac. And while I'm not an audiophile, I haven't really liked listening to YouTube videos or music from the phone in this way. I'm not saying the speakers on the phone are bad. They're fantastic for phone speakers, but they can't compare to my MacBook Pro 16. Yes, my Buds Pro 2 have bridged the gap. And it's not the primary way in which this phone was designed, but it's my video and I can cry if I want to. Talking about accessories, something that the Ultra has that the iPhone will never have is a built-in fidget toy. And sure, that's probably not what Samsung engineers intended when they included the S Pen but I love this clicking. I love this clicking so much. It's not all sunshine though. I have had some significant problems swapping and those problems are steep enough that I'm not sure that I could stay here long-term. And the frustrating part about that is it's not the Samsung ecosystem or the Samsung tech per se. There are no technical problems causing my issues. It's boring old middle-aged dude family things. My family right now is all in on iOS, macOS. They all have Apple IDs, which is how we give my son his allowance, how we do family app purchases, just a big chunk of our bank activity. The grown up adult things like bank bills, stuff like that is done via iOS and our Apple ID. It's more of that like account that we use more than the physical hardware that matters. Frankly, iMessage for all the 
tech and all the ink that gets spilled about it, it's the least grippy of the hooks that Apple gets in you when you start using their tech. I have to figure out all sorts of workarounds and cheats to make family tech still happen. I can log into Apple ID via web browser for some functions, which would let me do some of the things, and that's fine. Maybe that will be the thing I do because I'm probably gonna keep my MacBook. Moving like checking accounts for bills and stuff, that's not easy and you don't always wanna do it. And if you're just doing it because you want a little bit fancier of a phone, uh, that's it's so much harder to even consider swapping and it hurts. It actually kind of hurts because I want to use this phone primarily and I'm not, look, I'm not big enough of a dork to carry around two phones if I don't have to. And at the end of the day, that's really it. Two weeks of use, it's been so good. I really like, I like this phone so much, but I'm gonna need to figure out a way to make sure that I can use this and keep paying my bills at the same time. What about you? Are you also contemplating a switch? How's it going? Let us all, look, I am curious. I wanna know how you're doing. Let us all know in the comments below. And if you like this video, click here, click on the ultra to see that Samsung ecosystem video I made. So click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.